Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm doing the next installment of my Stephen King reading project. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm reading all of Stephen King's books in the order that they were published, starting with Carrie all the way through till, you know, today, current day. I've done the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Now I'm moving on to the year 2000 and anything after that. So um, the way I've been doing this is because he publishes a lot of books. Um, originally, I was going to do decades, but there's too many books to do in one video at a time, so I split them into two, each decade into two videos. So this one's going to be the 2000s, part one. It's basically going to be all the books that were published between the year 2000 and the year 2004. There are seven books on this list. Before we get into that, I just want to uh, let everyone know that I did make a Discord server for the channel. So um, I will put a link to that in the description below. You can um, join me. I've never really done this before. I don't really know how Discord works necessarily, but uh, just tinkering around with it right away. I made some some channels that I thought would be useful. I think especially it'll be nice for the book club uh, books. So if you're not if you haven't been reading the book club books and joining us with that, then uh, this will be a nice way to get a little bit more interactive um, with the conversations and, and bouncing ideas off of off of you guys and stuff uh, before I make the, the big videos. So if you if you are interested in that, check out the, the book club videos. Um, I can put those up here. Uh, the book we're reading right now is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. So check that out and, uh, you know, um, join us for a discussion. Back to Stephen King. Let's talk about the books that he wrote between the year 2000 and the year 2004. All right, so the first book on the list is Dreamcatcher, published in 2001. This was the first novel that he wrote after um, his accident. So in 1999, he was hit by a van while walking on the road and uh, almost died. It was He was very gravely injured. And uh, so this was the book that he was writing at, while he was recovering from that. He was on painkillers and lots and lots of drugs he was in a lot of pain uh he to, to the point where he wasn't able to sit at a desk so he wrote this entire book longhand in like notebooks uh which is crazy because it is it's a pretty long book like it's not his longest novel by any means but it's it's a chunker so that's cool in and of itself now the book itself i don't think is great a lot of people think this is like one of his worst novels i maybe wouldn't go so far but it's uh it's not his best for sure it kind of reminds me of like the tommy knockers a little bit it's very similar it's an alien story kind of science fiction-y um about these four friends that go hunting every year and um they encounter yeah aliens basically again it's a lot like the tommy knockers just because uh the aliens they're not just they're not like green men necessarily it's more like a mold or like an inf infestation and being near the aliens gives people telekinetic powers kind of so yeah it was it's a weird book um it's kind of all over the place but i think there's a good story in here it's just maybe a little long and kind of crazy but uh, not as bad as a lot of people make it out to be all right next was um black house this is a collaboration that he did uh, with Peter Straub. So this is the sequel to The Talisman. I didn't like this book really very much at all. Uh, first of all, it was very, very slow, especially in the first half. It took forever for it to kind of get going. You weren't even introduced to the main character of the story until probably 150 pages into the book. And, you know, it's a pretty long book. But still, like, my God. Um, so this one took me a very, very long time to kind of get into. The second half was better. It started to pick up and it started to, like, kind of make sense. But basically this is a continuation of Jack's story from The Talisman. There's, like, a serial killer guy in a small town in Wisconsin. Jack is a detective from Los Angeles and he is brought in to kind of help with the investigation. Uh... And it gets a little wild. The cool part about this book is there is a lot of Dark Tower sort of tie-ins. Um, there's a lot of, so a lot of references to Crimson King and things like that. A lot of the concepts from the Dark Tower are discussed and sort of clarified a little bit in this. 
Um, so I think if you are a Dark Tower fan, this is pretty essential, but it's not my favorite. So, alrighty, so the next one is Everything's Eventual. This one is a short story collection. It was published in 2002. Um, it was pretty good uh, for the most part. There's a couple of Dark Tower stories in here. Um, Little Sisters of Illyria kind of deals with uh, Roland. It's another kind of backstory of his. And then Everything's Eventual also has some Dark Tower tie-ins. 1408 is another kind of standout. Um, it's one of the longer ones in here. It was made into a movie with John Cusack, I think. And maybe Morgan Freeman was in it, too. I don't remember. Uh, I also liked The Man in the Black Suit. That was kind of creepy and weird. Yeah, so overall, these were this was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Next, also published in 2002, is From a Buick 8. Well, on the surface, this is a story about a magical Buick 8 that the police come into custody of and they put it in this, like, shed. Strange things happen. Things come out of it. Things get sucked into it. It kind of comes alive weirdly. Uh, it never moves or anything, but it just... Crazy stuff happens around it. And so they just kind of keep it a secret and they lock it up and they leave it there for, like, for, like, 40 years or whatever. This kid, he's, like, 12 or 13 years old. His name's Ned. His father gets killed he's one of the police that event sparks this kind of like a trip down memory lane with the police and they kind of explain to him what the buick is and how it was important to his father and so i don't know this book was okay it was kind of slow it was a lot of repetition in it it was kind of the same thing over and over and over again stories about this buick that were kind of all the same but it was really good, and it was, ultimately it was a story about dealing with and accepting the death of a loved one, more or less. And how sometimes things just happen, and bad things can just happen, and there's no, like, explanation for it. And you can search for, like, a reason for it, but it doesn't, there isn't always, a, a, like, a, like, a reason that, some, that bad things happen to you. You know what I mean? So, uh, that's kind of what this one is about. And so... I recommend this one for sure. All right, next, we got Wolves of the Kala, published in 2003. This is book five of The Dark Tower. Uh, I love The Dark Tower so, so much. This is not my favorite one, but this is a really, really good one. It's kind of uh, Stephen King's take on like Seven Samurai or, or uh, The Magnificent Seven, sort of that kind of story. This is the one where things get start to get a little wonky. This is the one where like our world and and the world of the Dark Tower and Stephen King's greater work really really start to like bleed together in this weird awesome way. I don't really want to talk too much about that because in case people haven't read the Dark Tower, well first of all, go read the Dark Tower. It's freaking amazing. And then also uh there's some crazy stuff in here. Be forewarned, before you read this one, you should read the, you should read Salem's Lot, for sure. Just a little heads up. So, uh, but yeah, fantastic book. All right, next, Song of Susanna. This is book six of The Dark Tower. came out in 2004. It's not my favorite. Uh, it's maybe my least favorite. I don't, I don't know. I did a ranking video of The Dark Tower books a while back. While that being said, it is, like, essential. You have to read it. You can't skip over it. Um, and it does a lot of things to, like, push the plot forward. Uh, certain events happen in this book that set up things that uh, that pay off in book seven but but it all makes sense in the grand scheme and um, while this is m one of my least favorite dark tower books it's still a fantastic book like it's amazing all right and then the last book on this list is the dark tower it's the seventh dark tower novel the seventh this is the final dark tower novel um, and this was published in 2004. It's pretty amazing to me that he that he wrote and published Wolves of the Kala, Song of Susanna, and The Dark Tower, all in like a year. It's a lot. It's a lot. This is a, these are huge books. But oh man, this one is really good. So the ending is 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 absolutely perfect. Like there's no other possible ending. A lot of people hate the ending. It's not a happy ending. It's kind. Of, it's a pretty dark ending. But I think it's perfect for the story. And I think it's. It's it's what the ending that this story needed, and uh, there are a few few things along the way that kind of m maybe aren't perfect. There's probably a lot of things along the way, but this one was the one that made me the most emotional, um, and partly because there's these there's all these characters that we've loved the whole time, 
that bad things happen to and so that makes me very sad there's a couple of I, I i cried a number of times during this and if you've read this book you probably know exactly what i'm talking about i mean the dark tower it's it's incredible it's it's a masterpiece and um there's really no series that i've read that's like it uh it's 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 a one of a kind kind of thing so um do yourselves a favor if you have not read the dark tower series just drop whatever you're doing and read it. Don't read anything else until you've read The Dark Tower. It's so good. All right, so that's the list. The second part of this, the, 2000, the 2000s part two, will probably be a ways down the road. I've got to read seven books, and some of them are very, very long. Um, and, of course, you know, I read other things, too, in between or whatever. So, uh, But the next one up on the list is going to be The Colorado Kid, so I'm excited to get into that. If you want to, you know, whatever, be notified or whatever when uh, that does eventually come out, go ahead and subscribe. At the beginning of the year, I had this kind of lofty goal to finish all the Stephen King books uh, by the end of the year, and that's certainly not going to happen. Maybe next year. I don't have that many more. Um, I'll get there eventually. I'm not, like, in any sort of rush. I just want to get get it done anyway that's it join us on discord um i can make a stephen king channel and we can just talk and geek out about stephen king if you guys want anyway thanks for watching have a nice uh, weekend or whatever and uh, i'll see you guys next time peace